Identifying the tag structure, Gabby here from bootcamp.com and in this dissection here, we'll be looking at the more inferior aspect of the perineum. So just to orient ourselves here, we're looking at an inferior view. So I want you to imagine that you're looking from the feet up. So right over here, we're able to see the femur or the thigh bone. So we're looking inferiorly and here we can see the testicles. So this is going to be anterior and this is going to be posterior. So this one right over here is actually going to be the external anal sphincter. So if we have a look at some of the muscles that are found within the pelvis or within this region, I'm going to just go ahead and zoom in a little bit over here. I want us to look at the muscles that are essentially surrounding that external anal sphincter. So these specific muscles are going to be the portions of the levator ani muscles. So they're essentially forming the pelvic floor or the bowl that actually sits within the pelvis. Some other muscles that we can see here as well is the bulbospongiosis as well as the ischiocavernosis. So a lot of these muscles that are found in the pelvic region are actually going to go ahead to attach along this area here called the perineal body. And it's a little bit thicker fascia that actually allows for these muscles to attach to them, but also just allows to provide support to the muscles and the organs of the pelvic floor. Now, if we have a look at this area here and the structure that is tagged, we can see that we have some nerves and vessels that are emerging from this region and eventually traveling more anterior and superiorly where they will go and supply and innervate these muscles. So including levator ani, bubble spongiosis, as well as the ischiocavernosis. Now this structure is going to be emerging specifically from the sacral plexus or from S2 to S4 nerve roots. So it actually branches off of the sacral plexus, eventually exits the pelvis and then re-enters the pelvis. And then afterwards it will travel here, it will pop up and it will travel within the pudendal canal where it will go and innervate some of those muscles that are found there. So specifically, this specific nerve is going to be the pudendal nerve. So the pudendal nerve is providing innervation to those muscles of the pelvis and also providing innervation to the external anal sphincter. And running adjacent to that pudendal nerve, we can see right over here is going to be the internal pudendal artery. So the pudendal nerve and the internal pudendal artery will be traveling together within that pudendal canal. So I just want to leave you off with a couple tips on how to recognize arteries versus nerves in a cadaveric dissection. Because I know that this one is very difficult. Sometimes you can't tell, especially when they're very, very small. But nonetheless, these tips and tricks can help you differentiate them. So the first thing you want to look for is color. Now, the important thing to note is that that's not always the case. Generally speaking, the arteries themselves do appear more red and a bit more like a pale yellow or pale white versus the actual nerves themselves are going to be a little bit more yellow. Now, another way that you can tell if the color is just not helping you out at all is I want you to have a look at the actual shape. So remember that arteries have a lumen, right? They have a space in which the blood needs to travel. So essentially these arteries are fairly squishy and they bounce back because their walls are full and full of elastin. Whereas the nerves themselves are just a ton of nerve fibers and axons that are essentially jam packed together. So the actual nerves themselves are a lot less squishy, a little bit more taut. So a couple ways there to help you identify an artery versus a nerve. So back to our question here, identify the tag structure. We said this structure right here is going to be the pudendal nerve. 